good for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, ain't no stopping us till we reach the finish line Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now, got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in a win. We're gonna give everything. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sick, sick. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sick, sick. S-I-C-K is the sickest. to listen to the sick podcast with tony maradero 55 seconds left in the penalty a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time boston four montreal three 
Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into Lemaire back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> you know, I, 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 there is a ball. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est bon. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le fin troisième de l'histoire. You found the dogs. John, you found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked the young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. It's going to be sick. Marinero, the sick podcast on this Wednesday, April 12. It is one minute past 10 p.m. Eastern. I am in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, specifically in my basement in beautiful Villa Salle, where we put together this podcast studio that is wow, absolutely beautiful. The best thing about it, my fridge is about six feet away and my bathroom about 10 feet away. It's a beautiful thing. And unlike radio, where you actually have to wait till the break to go to the bathroom, I actually, you know, can put somebody on and say, talk for the next 30 seconds. I'm going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. It's a beautiful thing. Another thing that is beautiful is that we are brought to you by absolutely great sponsors, one of which is La Bit at TB. Actually, we call them partners. Partners. Brewed in Quebec, a winner of a dozen international awards, La Bit at TB offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bit at TB, embrace your true nature. And also brought to you, in part by Energy Transportation Group, a leading full-service logistics provider serving all of North America, driven to be different owners there, Mike Cinquino and Sean Gerard. And I told you yesterday that uh, Sean Gerard's daughter was going to be playing in a very prestigious hockey tournament uh, over the next little while. She's going to Europe, uh, it looks like, next week. And she's going to take part in this tournament. And uh, isn't that awesome, huh? Isn't that awesome? Tiana is her name. So if Tiana is watching, Tiana, good for you. And I've been told that she's traveling with the Toronto Pro Hockey Development. Uh, they play the Czechs. They play Italy. They play France. They play USA and Sweden in the round robins. And uh, I think she's going to get uh, her jersey in the mail tomorrow. Isn't that pretty cool, huh? And you know what else is even cooler? Is that uh, she made the U14 team. As a 12-year-old, huh? That's pretty awesome. From Villa Sal, where they make unbelievable athletes and unbelievable radio hosts and podcasters. All right, the Montreal Canadiens played their second last game of the regular season, and guess what? Yeah, they lost to the New York Islanders by a score of 4-2. to two. What does that mean? That means a couple of things. That means uh, the Canadians still aren't very good. Uh, it also means that the New York Islanders, after missing the playoffs last year, have qualified for the playoffs this year. And that also means that the Pittsburgh Penguins have missed the playoffs after making it for 16 straight seasons. I had an opinion last year, and it was the same opinion all of this year. And I'm not always right with my opinions. As a matter of fact, I'm very often wrong. Well, that's what happens when you give opinions on absolutely everything. You're going to be wrong a lot. You're also going to be right a lot. Uh, but I'd rather give opinions than not just give them and sit on the fence. I don't do that kind of stuff. It's not my style. It's not my kind of radio. It's not my kind of television. It's not my kind of podcasting. My opinion, albeit unpopular, I think with time, I think it's proven to be the right opinion. I thought the Pittsburgh Penguins should have traded Evgeny Malkin and started a rebuild. I thought the Pittsburgh Penguins should have traded Christopher Latin and started a rebuild. Um, and I was not opposed to trading Sidney Crosby. Now, for those who got back to me and said at the time, you can't do that. Sidney Crosby is the franchise. The Penguins couldn't trade Mario Lemieux. The Red Wings didn't trade um, Steve Iserman. I get all that. The Edmonton Orders did trade Wayne Gretzky, by the way. But that was, you know what, it was a different context. I get it. Um, he wouldn't be the first franchise player to be traded, Sid the Kid. But I understand that 
sometimes you want to establish um, a blueprint for you what you know the way things are and the way you want them to be going forward. And it sends a great message if Sidney Crosby ends his career with the with the team that he started it. So I get all of that, but you know, so I, I won't you know. There, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer there. So I'm not going to disagree with anyone who says, no, no, you can't trade Crosby. I'm okay with that opinion, okay? But I think it's safe to say that the Penguins should have started their rebuild. Not all teams do, but a lot of teams do. Uh, a lot of teams end up trading their players eventually. You take a look at the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, they ended up trading Duncan Keith at one point. They ended up trading Dustin Bufflin at one point. Uh, they ended up trading Hosa at one point. They ended up trading Bickle at one point. They ended up trading Turvinen at one point. They ended up trading Anisimov at one point. Uh, they ended up trading, uh, oh, geez, I should know his name, Patrick Sharp at one point. I mean, it, it, you know, uh, they traded a lot of guys. And, uh, yeah, they kept Kane and Taves right until the end, traded Kane this year. Uh, Taves is still there, but you know, Chicago has started with the rebuild. Now I'm not crazy about the way they did it either uh, because I, I think they got rid of um, the Brinkett maybe way too early and Kirby doc way too early. But at the same time, if you want to rebuild, uh, you probably don't want to play the Brinkett, uh, paid the Brinkett $8 million going forward. Anyway, long story short, when you do your time in this league and you win your Stanley cups, the way the Pittsburgh Penguins did, they won three in a span of, I don't know what it was, but it was less than 15 years. At one point, you just you have to say goodbye to your stars. And um, friends is friends. Business is business. And uh, instead, they were just way too enamored with their stars, way too enamored with everything, and they wanted to give them another chance to win. And I knew that Pittsburgh was flawed. I knew that they lacked balance. I had a feeling that... Um, you know, they were going to be, it was going to come down to the final couple of games of the season, whether or not they were going to make the playoffs. And if they weren't, it wasn't going to surprise me. And you know what? I think Ron Hextall is on the hot seat. I, I think Ron Hextall is on the serious hot seat here. He made some moves that are mind-boggling. Uh, a former goalie who doesn't seem to have a very good evaluation of goaltenders. Uh, his, um, his, his, his style is, is somewhat um, unorthodox. That going back to the days of the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, as their general manager, and um, you know, trading Michael Matheson and trading John Marino were two very, very bad trades for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And if they would have had Michael Matheson and they would have had John Marino, uh, they would have made the playoffs. And then they could have continued with what they were doing. And you know what? Make get the playoffs, uh, get in, and you know what? Try and beat somebody and all that stuff, uh, and try and cause a surprise. Anyway, it didn't happen. So. Uh, that's that. The Montreal Canadiens, we will uh, we'll get to their game uh, in just a second. I'll let you know that the Laval Rocket won again tonight as they make their push for the playoffs and try and hold on to a playoff spot. And in the process, Raphael RV Pinard, like our buddy Danik does uh, on social media, picked up five assists. Five! I love this kid. I love this kid. I also love Grant McCagg of Recruits and Recruits.ca, and he joins me tonight. What's going on, my man? Hey, Tony. Great to uh, great see Laval win. That's a big one. Yeah. You always look very happy to see me. You know, let's go to Grant McCagg. I go to you like this. <laughs> is, that, is that your way of telling me you love me or what? What's the story here? <laughs> yeah. Tough love, Tony. I love Raphael R.V. Pinard because, you know, he went down to Laval with a smile on his face. And the yeah. young generation, many of them are spoiled. Many of them are spoiled brats. And I've come across a lot of athletes who think they made it before they actually made it. And you know what? Uh, going down and playing with the farm team, uh, I don't like that. All right? I saw with my very own eyes, and the sport wasn't hockey, but two pro players come down and play for the farm team, and they didn't want to be in the same dressing room as the players 
because they were pro players. They weren't farm team players. You know what I mean? There's a lot of athletes nowadays that have this kind of mentality, and there's a lot of youngsters who are spoiled brats, and you know what? They just they think they've arrived before they've done anything with their career. This kid who comes up, scores a ton of goals for the Canadians, proves himself to everyone. Small sample, but I mean, it's hard to believe you do that by fluke. Worked really hard, played a 200-foot game, did everything that was asked, block shots, finished his checks. You can tell he's a real gamer, plays with a tremendous amount of professional and personal pride. He goes down with that same smile on his face. The first game down scores a big goal, says he's happy to be there. He's losing $4,000 a day, by the way. Says he's happy to be there. And in the second game that he plays with them, he picks up five assists. This kid has all my respect. See, I'm, I'm not smiling because you don't let me get a word in edgewise, Tony. Now you can. Go ahead. Oh, okay. It's my turn? Okay. <laughs> I, I yeah I, I agree 100 percent and and I loved your take on uh, on the penguins and I agree actually completely with what you're saying by the way about uh, Malkin I think uh, you know they should have traded Malkin and and Let, Letang and uh, I think they should do it this year too now you know if they didn't do it last year when I think they should have but I think yeah. now's the time I, I'd also get rid of Hextall but Burke won't. You know Burke's decision, and he he won't do it. He won't. You know I I, I can't see him uh, getting rid of him this early. But uh, to, you know your your point on Harvey Pinard. I mean, <laughs> he, he he turned into a goal scorer at the NHL level, and then goes back down, and now he's a supreme playmaker. You know he's, he's kind of proven that he can do it all this year, which is uh, I mean we always knew he had the energy. I always uh, you know I foresaw him as the consummate fourth liner for the Canadians. That's what I figured. Just the energy guy that's going to give it is every shift for the team. But I've uh, I've raised my expectations on him for sure, from what I saw when he got called up to Montreal. Because he, to me, he uh, you know he has a real chance of being a a, a solid uh, top nine winger on the Canadians for a while for a long time with you know with with the what he's proven this year. So I mean I think that's that's up for a seventh round draft pick. If you can get that out of them, it's just outstanding. Yeah, no, it's absolutely amazing. Hey, uh, well, I have to tackle this. I want to go back to the Penguins for a second because Ben says, guys, if Genny Malkin has 85 points this year, well, yep. actually he's got 83 and uh, I don't, uh, I don't care. It, it's 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 besides the point that, that that's it's you know you know everybody knows that Malkin can pick up points but you have to start your rebuild that's what I'm trying to tell you you have to start your rebuild and because Malkin is making the money that he's making too it gets in your way of going out and shoring up other positions and getting other players the Penguins won their three cups right and everyone knows that Christopher Latin 39 points in 63 games uh, Evgeny Malkin, 83 points in 81 games. Yeah, it's great. It's it's all great. I still think they should rebuild. I, I really do. Evgeny Malkin is 36 years old, man. Christopher I... Latin is 35. Jeff Petrie's 34. Jeff Carter's 37. Crosby's 35. I don't care if they have 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 points. At a certain point, you got to get younger. I think uh, that just, uh, you know, that only accentuates the fact that you should trade him. You're like, if he'd have got 40 points, I'd be saying, no, don't trade him because his value is low now. But, you know, he's still getting 85 points. To, to me, that only makes it more, because uh, you know, you're going to get a King's Ransom for him. There'll be a team out there that, that'll pay, you know, he's still hitting 85 points. They'll think, well, if we can get a, more than a point, Per game out of him over the next couple of years that could be the missing piece for us to you know because pittsburgh isn't going to win with they, they they don't have the young talent coming in they for years they traded every year they traded the first round picks i think they might have they're certainly bottom five in in uh prospects and young 
you know, under 24 players in the NHL. They just don't have it. So they're not going to be improving over the next couple of years. Now is the time. Uh, Malkin got 85 points. Great. His value is high. Uh, you know, get get rid of him now and get uh, – they can get a lot back for him. And, yeah. Uh, ben, and the ben, same says, ben says, come on, Tony, how many Penguins games have you watched? They haven't got goaltending. Yeah, Ben, I, I don't watch Penguins games. As a matter of fact, I don't watch Canadians games. I don't watch <laughs> anybody's games. I don't want it. I don't watch any sports at all. I mean, I go on the radio for a 15 minute collab five days a week, and I go on television for a 15 minute collab four days a week, and I do a podcast for an hour a night, four days a week. And you know what? I, I do it without watching any sports whatsoever. I don't watch the Penguins. I don't watch the Habs. I don't even watch hockey. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know the rules. All right? Okay? Thank you. Yes, I don't need you to tell me that the Penguins use three goalies this year, that they use Tristan Jarry for most of their games. They use Casey the Smith just a little bit less than him, and they use Dustin Tokarski for a handful. I don't need you to tell me that Tokarski's save percentage was under 900 and Casey the Smith's save percentage was just over 900 and Tristan Jarry's was slightly better. I also know that their defense is not very good. I also know that their defense is not very deep. I also know that their third and fourth lines don't play very good team defense either. And their top two lines, Crosby is the most responsible one, obviously, by far. But they like to play, you know, a, a trade chances type of game. And when your defense isn't very good and your goalie's not very, you know, your goalie needs to be insulated. Well, then you're going to have to score five goals a game to win the game. And that doesn't happen every night. But Ben, anyway. Listen, thank you for the comment. I really appreciate it. If you don't think I'm watching, well, then you shouldn't watch either. All right, okay. So we got that out of the way. I feel so much better now. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, let's get back to the hockey game and the Montreal Canadiens tonight, if we can. Outshot 35 to 19. And even though the season is pretty much, you know, it's over, there's one game left, a lot of people really upset, if you took a look at social media, with Mike Hoffman. And the penalty that he took... The nonchalant play all night, I mean, the, obviously he's checked out. He's not the only one, but tonight he's feeling the heat, Grant. Yeah, well, he's he's always been a kind of an easy one to, to pick on, right? Because he's not, he's not noted for his defensive play or his efforts. So on the nights when, you know, he makes a poor defensive play or or has poor effort, it's, you know, much like Drew, I right? easy to to call them out right those are those are the two guys that are noted for not maybe uh always playing with the most consistency so when 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 they have those games uh, you, you know everyone likes to likes to lament about it but uh you know he's got another year thanks to Bergevin there we gotta keep him around till the trade deadline I guess next year and hope that some team uh wants to pick him up because I don't see I don't see somebody wanting him in the in the off season like unless it's some sort of a package where he's you know maybe sweetens it up uh, yeah you know where where it's a, a team can take the salary like Arizona or something you know they seem to take everybody's uh, unwanted so uh, I'm I'm afraid that we'll be stuck with him till uh, you know till March next year. All right, so you are um, a scout by trade. This is what you do going back to the Bob Ganey administration. You still do it, of course, with uh, your independent hockey scouting service that you have, which is recruits and recruits.ca. And he's wearing the sweatshirt there. Look at that, the way he's showing it off. What a beauty that is. Uh, <laughs> subscribe uh, for uh, a cup of coffee and a couple of bagels. You can actually pay your subscription to recruits.ca. It's not very much. And you get in-depth analysis. You get all kinds of scoops on the draft and the kids and the players and this and that and all that stuff. Now, uh, when you scout games, you scout a lot of them from the press box, I would imagine, correct? Uh, no, I like to sit in the stands with the scouts. Okay. Uh, we're usually in the kind of in the corner a bit, up up a little higher, uh, okay. but not not as high as the, I, I find the press box is usually too high up. You know? Well, well, that's, you know, obviously that's junior hockey. Correct. So you're, you're yeah. absolutely right about that. And uh, when it's, yeah. uh, when it's AHL or when it's national hockey league, the, the scouts, of course, finds themselves in the press box. And by the way, I agree with you, okay? So I find it too high. As a matter of fact, uh, every chance, like if I want to go to a game, 
I try and get tickets to the game instead of actually going in a press box where I know that I can get my pass and I can get in. I just find it way too high. My my, I'm I'm scared of heights. All right, so my uh, my legs start shaking and stuff like that. I don't like it too much. The reason why I ask you this is that I had a suggestion this morning, and it's there's it's not the end of the world that they didn't go with my suggestion. By the way, all right, but I thought it would have been a good idea for Marty St. Louis to watch the game from the press box tonight. We've seen coaches do this from time to time. As a matter of fact, I think I saw Tortorella do this last week. I, I think if we go back in time, the memory is not very good, but I think we can dig it up. There's been a bunch of coaches, you know, in the last, uh, you know, over the last decade that have done that, that when, you know, every now and then, hey, you know what? I want to go in the press box. It's usually coaches that do this are usually coaches who are coaching a losing team that's not going to the dance, okay? But with two games left in the season and this game being on the road, and knowing that it's an easy game for guys to check out because guys already have their tea times and the missus has already booked, you know, the all-inclusive vacation to wherever, <laughs> I thought it would have been a great opportunity for him to do that, to further his evaluation and so that he can actually maybe cement his beliefs on some players and maybe change his mind on others. He didn't do it, and that's okay. But yeah. are you a fan of the coach going in the press box? I don't know that it happens with that many. I know Torts, like you say, uh, he's done it for the last five or six games, I believe. You know, he was even last game, he, he was doing it. Um, but John Tortorella's coached about a thousand games in the NHL, too. You know, it's not like uh, uh, what Marty's uh, coached less than 100 at this point. So I don't know. Uh, he, I think he needs all the practice and, and, and bench experience that he can get at this point but certainly in the future if, if after he has experience and stuff uh you know I, I i don't i don't think that's a horrible idea if they have if they're out of the playoffs and you, you want to do some evaluating but uh you know his job is to coach and um you know i think with uh, the fact that they've got a new gm in in philadelphia that that they're relying on tortorella to kind of you know to be a sort of an assistant to him really uh -huh. you know with his experience and um briere is a, a rookie right so yeah rook, rookie gm so uh you know it, it's not the same case with with marty and i i think that uh you know he needs every game of experience that he can get behind the bench so i i'd, I'd have kept him behind behind the bench instead of a value Oh, yeah, you know sense. what I'm doing right now? I'm actually calculating uh how many games? Yeah, no, so he so he took over, if you recall, Grant. He took over on uh, uh February 10th last year, a 5-2 mm -hmm. loss versus the so, Washington Capitals, right? So a little over 100 there games. Were, there were two, four, uh there were eight games in February, okay? Yeah. Eight in February. There were uh 5 9 12, there were 15. Yeah. In so March, he's coached 110 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, 23 and no, actually more than that. Uh, okay, not, that not that it matters, all right. But uh, no, nope. nope. when the season ended last year, it ended in uh, in uh, April. Yeah, uh, it ended a little April. later. So I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten that, that he had uh, 133, you know, 35, 37, had, uh, 37 plus 81. I believe it's 118 games, right? But anyway. Right. Okay. I get your point. I'm just, you know, I'm just talking. Well, for I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if you coach 99 games or 118, it's still. Yeah, yeah. My point yeah, yeah. stands, Tony. Uh, no, 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 100%. 100%. It's still, uh, you know. Yeah. He's still, he's, still, uh, he's still a greenhorn when it comes, you know, among NHL coaches, like uh, not many have coached 120 games. So now it would be uh, it would be unfair for me to just single out Mike Hoffman and say that he's the only one who checked out and packed it in tonight. But. Jonathan drawing was like, <laughs> my God, man. It was him and Hoffman tonight. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, uh, it was tough to watch, man. It really was tough to watch. Are they good golfers? Cause I think maybe they were thinking about, you know, tea times there. I don't know, man. Like, but it was, look, this stuff happens, right? So what do you, what would you say? And look, you can make you can make arguments on both sides of the fence because 
the National Hockey League, you know, when a team makes the playoffs in the second last game of the season and another team doesn't make the playoffs in the second last game of the season, you can say that the National Hockey League's formula of 82 games, that it works, okay? But how about this? How about a play-in? We saw it before. We we see it in sports. How about a play-in? And how about putting more teams in the playoffs? Yes or no? Yeah. So play in for like 13th or 14th for the Habs or? No, or well, and, and not, not to the point where it's 13th no, no, or 14th. I'm but just kidding. Yeah, uh, but, you know, look, the National Hockey League has to do stuff to, to yeah. try and get people more interested, right? You saw it in the NBA with the play, and you saw it actually in the COVID year with the play in as well. But, you know, I'm not, know. Uh, I'm not totally opposed to it, I have to tell you. I'm not totally opposed to it. Well, I mean, it's the second last game of the season, and you, they're still deciding – the last playoff spot. So it's not like, you know, there was no drama this year. There were four teams in it right till the, right till our third last game, you know? So do you have a play in for the sake of a game or two? Like, I guess you could, but uh, I, yeah, I don't mind them. I watched the, the end of the Raptors game after the, after the, you know, I haven't watched a lot of Raptors games this year, but I admit that I watched the end of that after the Habs game. Uh, uh, yeah, if if uh, if those of you who are watching right now on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and Twitter Live, Grant, thank you for going to the Raptors, and you missed it. I'll tell you that the Toronto Raptors were up by 19 points with about nine minutes left in the third quarter. They lost, and they're not going to the dance. Isn't yeah. that something, huh? At home, Isn't too. that something, yeah. So, uh, missing, what, a couple of free throws at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Siakam, Siakam had three had three to tie it, and he missed two. You know, like that's heartbreaking. Uh, but yeah, I actually don't mind the the play-ins, and if it means a little more excitement down the stretch, uh, you know, it means a couple of more cities can be a little more excited about you know about possibly getting into the playoffs. I mean, yeah. I didn't mind the qualifiers; they did it. Don't forget, eh, right? The yeah, the, they did it the year of the the COVID when they they did it in the fall there the playoffs and uh, I, I didn't mind Montreal qualifying for the playoffs. You know, got it. Listen, it. I'm gonna ask yeah. you a question, point blank. You ready? Yep. Tomorrow night versus Boston Bruins. Will Jonathan Drouin be playing his last game as a Montreal Canadian? It looks that way. I don't see uh, – I think it's best for him to move on, you know. So I, I'll i extend it. Here's an extension to that question. Tomorrow night versus the Boston Bruins, will Jonathan Drouin be playing his last game in the National Hockey League? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, Alex Galchenyuk still, you know, still getting called up. You You're know? right. You're yeah. right. Uh, no, he – and I agree with you, by the way. I think he's going to find the team somewhere. But oh, yeah. I, I, you know what? I, I think I, I don't see him getting more than a million and a half. Right. He's not going to make five or you know what was he making five and a half million this year? Yeah, six year deal, thirty three million dollars before he actually even had a practice <laughs> with the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was one of the things with Bergy there. He signed a few coaching uh contracts and a couple of you know uh contracts like that that uh, that came back to to bite him for sure gallagher and uh you know armia hoffman and uh drew for sure um yeah i mean he'll probably make two and a half to three million on a one-year contract with somebody i would think because he's still you know uh on average, over an 82 game season, even this year, he's probably around 50 points. So, yeah, 50 point scorers don't make a million and a half, Tony, even if it is Jonathan Drew. You know, I understand he's that. In his yeah. prime and he, so, he'll he'll probably make between two and four million somewhere, you know, in the short on a short deal. And uh, team will hope that he can, you know, if he can, you could put him like Colorado. I know we, we talked about it before, right? Yeah. That Maybe seems Colorado like the, the seems like the best fit. Seems well, like the best fit. You know, come to Colorado. We'll uh, 
we'll put you on the power play sometimes with McKinnon and and, and Ratton and those guys. And hey, if he if he can uh, if he can get you 50, 60 points, and uh, I, I don't see why he couldn't play with guys like that if he got the opportunity. You know, if he's making three million or four million, that it, there aren't many players making three, four million that score 50, 60 points. So I think he, I, I don't think it, you know, and he's 27, is he, Tony? Yeah. Like, you know, about that. So, yeah. you know, he's in his prime, uh, as they say. So, in terms uh, of yeah. age, yes. I, I don't think, uh, I don't think his NHL career is done by any means. All right. Okay. Uh, speaking of which, so we talked about Hoffman, who brought nothing to the table tonight. We talked about Jonathan Drouin, who brought nothing to the table tonight. Dennis Kurianov did not do himself any favors tonight. I mean, if he wants to be a Montreal Canadian and have the Canadians um, give him a contract at the end of the season, he really didn't do himself any favors tonight. He had that one, uh, that one nice rush, eh? I think he had the yeah. backhand that, I mean, if that went in, okay, you know, he, he did something. He had one good chance, but there's just not a consistency with his play at all. Armia has been more consistent in the last two weeks and that's saying something. So now you're right about that. They should have, you know, next year they should have uh, Yol Armia just show up at game 75, make him play the last seven games of the regular season. That's it. He sleepwalks for the first 75 games of the season. And then all of a sudden you see him and you're like, my God, where's this guy coming from? He's got serious <laughs> tools. Hey, what a pass. What a pass from Jake Evans, eh? I have to tell you, Jake Evans, some nights, he pulls he pulls <laughs> off some plays yeah, like that you would see star players do, right? But then, you know, he is who he is. But uh, he's got, you know, there's, there's some games you see those hands and they're like, wow, his hands were great. What a pass by him tonight. Yeah, and we saw that in the, even in uh, college, you know. He had some highlight reel passes and goals at yeah. times and you thought you know maybe this guy has middle line upside you know as a yeah. center but uh it's just it's so few and far between with him you know which uh yeah. i mean his his size and skill level is okay but it's not uh it's not you know top two for sure potential uh, and uh the even third line it uh, He's another guy that, like Armia, if you'd have told, asked me two, three weeks ago, mm -hmm. you know, guys that you would uh, maybe would be hard pressed to make the team next year, I would have picked both yeah. of those guys. Today, I'm not as sure. I think they both picked up their games, and uh, I mean, they're both under contract, so they're you know, unless they're dealt somewhere, they're not likely going anywhere. But Evans, uh, I. I, I, I did think that there there could be an upgrade there. There should be an upgrade in the mm -hmm. bottom line centers. Now I'm not as sure. Like maybe he's uh fourth line center, thirteenth, fourteenth forward. Yeah. He just needs to stay healthy for an extended period of time. And yellow and Sammy and master control. Can you bring up the lineup? There we go. All right, Suzuki in between Armi and Hoffman, and we're gonna get to number 14 in just a second. Drouin with Gurianov and Farrell. Evans with Gallagher on his right and Pitlick on his left, and the fourth line of Tierney, Teasdale, and Pozzetta, who were a combined minus six in tonight's hockey game. Joel Teasdale, God love him, almost got one early on, uh, went off the post. Uh, other than that, it wasn't meant to be. Matheson, Barron, Edmondson, Weidman, Kovacevic, and Allard, and Samuel Montembeau got the start and goal. I thought Montembeau uh, made some big saves and probably let in a couple that he probably should have had. But at the same time, it just seemed like he was screened all night long. By the way, the, 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 the Islanders do a real good job of screening the goaltender. In particular, uh, Anders Lee is very, very yeah. good at it. And he's very good at deflecting pucks as well. Yeah. Have, um, have you seen a big enough sample size from Farrell? Um, yes or no. Uh, he was relatively uh, invisible tonight. He played on a line with two guys that struggled with drawing Garyanov. We know he's not a big guy. There are, you know, everyone talks about how much skill, natural, pure talent he has. But of course, there's that concern whether or not it's going to be able to translate at the National Hockey League level. Based on what you've seen, is it an incomplete 
Is it a non-applicable? Is it a let's wait and see? Where do you stand here? Oh, I certainly, yeah. I mean, it's hard to predict how his NHL career will go. And it, even if he has a long one, I, uh, you know, we haven't seen enough to, to judge one way or the other. But what I, you know, what I see is that he needs AHL time. That's, that's what I, that's what I have seen. I haven't seen anything that tells me that he, he should have a spot next year in the lineup. Um, I think he needs to get stronger and faster. You yeah, know, he's, he's still a kid. Uh, he wasn't a fast skater, you know, when he was drafted. He's improved his skating a lot, mm-hmm. but we're seeing at the NHL level that he, he's uh, at best an average skater at the yeah. NHL level at this point. Yeah. And at his size, you Tony, you got to be you got to be above average uh, skater because he's not going to muscle guys. He's not going to you know he's not going to drive to the net and beat them with by out muscling them, he's going to have to beat them with speed. And uh, he's not doing that. And he, he's, he's spending a lot of the time chasing the puck, you know, not, and uh, in college and in the USHL, he was, uh, you know, at least an average to above average skater. And he was able to, uh, you know, along with it, with his great hockey sense, yeah, it made, it made him dangerous all the time. But he's not dangerous at the NHL level as of yet. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's going to take training. It, you know, he has a really good off-season training. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps he comes to camp faster and quicker, like uh, Harvey Pinard did for two years. You know, improved his skating every off-season. Mm-hmm. Jake Evans did the same thing when he first came to the Canadians. His skating was it up to snuff and he improved it every year it came back to camp every year and say oh he's gotten faster you know he's gotten stronger uh farrell's gonna have to do the same thing he's gonna have to uh you know uh, i think it'll take a year in the a and two off seasons and then come back in two years and uh and fight for a uh a middle line role there's a couple of players who weren't very big in stature. I'm going to name you their names. And they tore up the American Hockey League. They were elite American Hockey League players. And then they made it to the National Hockey League, and they were just missing a little something. And you call those guys tweeners. Too good for the American Hockey League, missing a little something in the National Hockey League. Their names, Corey Locke and Charles Houdon. Yeah. Not big. They didn't have X factors to their game. I say those players' names in the same sentence that I say Sean Farrell's name. And I'm not telling you that Sean Farrell's not going to have a National Hockey League career and that he's going to be Corey Locke or he's going to be Charles Houdon. But if I bring that up, it's concerning, it's warranted, it's not warranted, it's... What do you think? Well, I, I, I don't know that Charles Houdon was too good for the AHL even, you know? I mean, he was a good AHL player, but that's what he was, you know? A good AHL player. Corey and I Locke agree he was a, Corey Locke definitely was a, a dominant AHL oh player. Oh, yeah, like big points, you know? Yeah. Like... Uh, I wouldn't have called. A, I, I don't think he was great defensively, or you know, all around in, in the AHL. But certainly, certainly he was productive. You know, um, and I mean, but Sean Houdon in, in junior was 70, 80 point scorer, if I recall correctly. Like he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, he was a fifth round draft pick. That yeah, uh, you know, his his point. He never produced like Farrell. Uh, Farrell put up like he set records in the USHL, and then uh, as a rookie, and then and, and, and then was second, I think, in points per game in the in mm-hmm. college this year. Yeah, as a, as a sophomore, which is damn impressive. You know, the only guy that that scored at a better pace was uh, was uh, Fantilli, and he's going to go top two in the draft. So uh, I think there's more potential with Farrell than there was with Charles Houdon and Corey Locke who, you know, his skating definitely uh, was a hindrance. And, and I mean, you know, there, you, you, 
there's been examples of that through time, Tony. You could go back with other clubs and, you know, yeah. where they uh, tore up junior, they tore up uh, AHL, but they were small and they were average skaters. And at the NHL level, that's just, it's so hard. Unless you bring some, like, if unless you have the, you know, Gallagher or Harvey Pinard Hart, you know, and, and few do, um, it, it's really tough for you to excel at the next level. It's just, that's just one stepping stone too much, too far. Anthony Richard uh, picked up a, uh, a hat trick in tonight's game. All right. I love this kid <laughs> when he played for the Canadians this year, right? I really, he's got NHL speed for sure. That one goal that he scored, remember that goal that he scored where he was able to pick up the pass? I think he put it from his skate to his stick or the way he turned and a quick wrist shot and it went right upstairs. This kid's got something. What doesn't he have? For of him, for him to have basically had a longer look, in your opinion, uh, size, consistency. Uh, unfortunately, the Canadians have too many small wingers, and uh, he, he started off really quickly, like impressively, the first few games with the Canadians. I thought, and then he tailed off a bit, and uh, you know, guys got healthy again and. You know, I mean, you run into you, you run into numbers, right? Where you can't send NHL guys down; somebody has to get sent back down, and they, unfortunately, it was him. You know, he would have never got that opportunity if it wasn't for injuries. So when guys got healthy again, he wasn't uh, scoring really. At, you know, at that point, they already had a lot of small, smaller players in the lineup, and I think. You know, and then they picked up Guryanov too. And so, the, you know, there were circumstances that led to him going back down. But, yeah, he had some, you know, he had he had some good games and some good mm -hmm. shifts and some good plays. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe next year he shows up and has a great training camp. You score goals in exhibition games and training camp, and you can, you can earn a long look. And that's what he'll have to do next year. He'll have to. When he gets his looks in the exhibition games, he'll have to do what he did. He'll have to impress you like he did when yeah. he got called up. And who knows? Maybe maybe he can carve out a bottom line spot next year with the Habs. What did you think of uh, Allard? 13 minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, he was a plus one on the night. Got himself a yeah. shot on goal. Actually, a real good shot on goal, to tell you the truth. Yeah. I I, I didn't think he looked that that poorly you know i really out of place uh i mean i i don't i don't foresee an nhl future with him but certainly uh you know he's going to help out laval and uh it, it's 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 testament to the job that they're doing you know in the ahl and and with with roby dog yeah uh, you know these guys come up and baron like at one point this year i i I never thought that he'd be, you know, he was heading back down and that was yeah. it. Yeah. It might be a year before we saw him again. Well, yeah. He, uh, you know, he's still having his ups and downs, but he's had games where he's looked really good over the past couple of he months. He really too. has. Yes. Hey, hey, listen, uh, we saw his skating. We saw him pinching. We saw him joining the rush. We saw a pretty good wrist shot that he wouldn't think he had. We scored a couple of goals. I think at one point he had like three goals in a couple of weeks or whatever it was. It was yeah. like, what well, was, it was mind boggling. What's going on here? But, you know, I saw him in camp and he looked soft and he didn't look like he had any X factor to his game. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> no, he's going down. He went down, and you know what? Credit to the kid because he worked really hard. He came up, and it's going to yeah. be tough next year. Eh? There's going to be so much oh. competition on that blue line. I think next year's camp, in terms of competition on the blue line, is going to be something that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. Now, we know that Lane Hudson wants to is going to go back and play another year of NCAA. Uh, your thoughts on that decision? Yeah, that's that's probably a smart decision. For him, you know, um, he, uh, he he needs to get stronger. Yeah, uh, uh, like he, he can, it'll it'll buy him some time, Grant. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, he he wants to when he leaves. Like, and he even told me this. Like, 
when he leaves school, he wants to be ready to play at the NHL. Like he had no AHL for him if if it's up to him, right? Yeah, of course. Now I don't know that that's what will happen, but uh, who wants to make know. AHL money and ride the bus when you can well, that, uh, be on the charter right. and make NHL money too? Come on, right? And I mean, you know, they probably weren't going to offer like a guarantee, you know, at this point. Yeah, uh, uh, but next year at this time, uh, you know, when when the season's wrapping up in college. They'll probably do what they did with Farrell and, you know, dangle the carrot for him and say, well, you, you get to play with the team for the rest of the, you know, the NHL team with the rest for the rest of the year. And then he'll, then he'll uh, likely come out, you know, but yeah, he, he he's got to keep growing and uh, keep working on his defensive game. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not as bad as some people claim it is. However, you know, handling uh, the NHL size and handling college size are two different, two different things altogether. All right. Okay. So, listen. Thanks so much for your contributions. One more game to go tomorrow night versus the Boston Bruins. Uh, in ending in thirty seconds, your thoughts on the Bruins surpassing the Canadians one hundred and thirty-two points back in the late seventies. They've done that. But Yvon Lambert says, hold on a second. You know, all the overtimes and stuff. We only had eight losses in a season. The Bruins have had more than that. Your thoughts, though, nevertheless, on the Bruins beating the points record? Yeah. <laughs> Got to be a big asterisk there, I think, Tony. Don't you Don't you think? There's an asterisk, but I have to tell you, I'm blown away by what Jim Montgomery's well, done with this team this year. Like, I'm absolutely oh, yeah. blown away. Like, I would have never, like, you know, I would have thought the Bruins would have picked up 82 games, max 102 points. Yeah. Like, they've picked up 30 points more than I thought they were going to pick up. That's unreal. That's 15 wins. Well, that's it. And, uh, you know, we can't downplay what they've done. Like, we can, you know, we can complain about the it not really be breaking the Canadians' record, and I don't think it does. But at the same point, you can't uh, you can't downplay what you know what they've accomplished this year. It, it's amazing, and they deserve uh, tons of credit for it, for sure. Thanks so much, Grant. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon because uh, I, I'll tell you right now, I want you to uh, circle this on your calendar. Monday, May the 8th. Yeah. Right? The NHL Draft Lottery. And yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to have an earlier edition of the SICK Podcast that night which is going to coincide with the start time of the draft lottery. And yeah. I'm going to ask you right now to make yourself available because I'd like you to be one of my collaborators that night. And we'll watch the draft lottery live as it goes down. And then after that, we'll find out where the Montreal Canadiens are selecting. Then I'll have you weigh in. Does that sound good? So you want me down there? Uh, no, no, you don't, you don't have to be down. No, no, you can do no. it from home. You can do okay. it from home. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I can still watch it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't have a TV in front of me here. Like, ah, okay. So uh, you know, I, I guess uh, we're gonna have to find a way to send you one. What can I tell you? Uh, <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna have to do something. Yeah, here. I'll move the TV over uh, along that far. Yeah. Away. Okay. So cool. so I, I have uh, I have a beautiful stand on wheels. All right. <laughs> um. I uh, and uh, I put my I put my TV on this stand. And I roll it from one room into the other, you know. So you know what? Uh, I'm not saying that that would be a good that would be a good alternative to get yourself one of those. It's, it's pretty handy, I got to tell you, because uh, the second it gets a little bit warmer here, I'm actually going to take it out of this room and I'm going to bring it outside next to my spa. So I'll be watching TV from the spa this summer. Thank Excellent. you, Grant. Have a great night, my man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tony. All right, it's now time for you called. You called. Call. Presented by Playground. Do you buy Playground, your premier gaming destination located just over the Mercia Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal? The toll free number is 1 888 585 7425. I'm in one of these moods tonight uh, where we're going to have fun if you give me a call. Once again, it's toll free. You can call from your home phone. And, uh, you know, I've told Daniela we should do this on, on more than one occasion, but I know when we had Stéphane in Quebec Cité, who's 66 spinning on YouTube Live, at one point we actually gave him the video link. You know, I would even be open to giving 
the video link. I, I'd even be open to giving the video link, you know? But, uh, you know, Stefan, we trusted him because, you know, we never know who you're going to get on the video link. But I, I think it's something that we're going to, uh, we're going to have to do uh, at some point. Who wants the video link? Matrix says 530 viewers. Yes, we got 530 viewers on YouTube alone watching live. Hey, listen, this is the Montreal Canadiens. It's Montreal. It's Hockey Town. It's This is it, man. Of course. I'd rather we have 5,000. But you know what? We got 530. Insta Custom says video link playing with fire, Tony. I'm not playing with fire. I'm a freelancer. I do a podcast. Somebody does something on the video link. What am I? I'm going to get fired? It's out of my control. I mean, I could not give them the video link and not do it, but, you know. Even though I work for Sammy and Aniello, I, I kind of feel like I work for myself now. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing, by the way. You know. You know Freedom 55? I got it at 49. Freedom 49 I got it at. Um, why is it that everyone... Uh, why is it that every time I try calling from the U.S., no one answers? Maybe because Agnello and Sammy, they're going for a coffee, you know? They have Cafe Fantini in their house, and they're probably taking the time out to go for a coffee. Maybe that's the reason why. I don't know. 66 spinning, calling in. Let's go. Says Justin Piper. I'm not so sure he is. We do have somebody. David in Toronto. But, but listen to me. It's David in Toronto. David, how are you? Hey, Tony, I'm doing great. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you. If I can, David, if I can, I want to tell you something. I very much appreciate you calling in. I really, really do. But I have to say this, right? To all you Montrealers, but how embarrassing is it that this is somewhat of a post-game show when the Montreal Canadiens play their game and we go to the phone lines and the first call through is a call from Toronto. Like, what are, what are Montrealers doing exactly? Well, what are they doing? But, David, I'm happy you called. Yeah. How are you? No, I, I'm happy I called too, Tony. I'm actually from Montreal. I just live in Toronto. So I oh, have really? Toronto. Okay, when did, so when did you move to Toronto and why did you move there? Uh, I moved here for family reasons and I moved here like 20, just over 20 years ago. But born and raised in Montreal and uh, I... Okay. Uh, I believe 20 that. years later, have you accepted the move or is your heart still in Montreal? My heart never left. <laughs> so which city, in your opinion, has more spirit? And me being completely unbiased? Yeah. Hands down, Montreal. Montreal has more spirit. I've I've been to I actually worked for Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment and I, I I worked at a lot of Leaf games. Yeah. And I go to Montreal every year. Um, you know, with, with my girlfriend now. We, we we always go to a Habs game at least once a year. And every time we walk in the Bell Center, it's just it's just a special feeling that no other stadium has. So Yeah. But more opportunity in Toronto, correct? More opportunity yeah, yeah. I mean there is a lot of work opportunity out here for sure, but you can't beat the food, the sports, uh, the people in general in Montreal, hands down, in my opinion, uh, some of the nicest, most genuine people for sure. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So, uh, tell me what's on your mind. Uh, I've been watching pretty much every Habs game now. And, uh, now that we're coming down to the last game tomorrow, hoping for a loss, just, obviously so we can get the best chance uh, at a high pick uh and i'm i'm curious what your thoughts are if we were to draft at 5 who would you hope that montreal picks and why minchkov and i'm going to tell you why i didn't say another name because fantilli won't be there at 5 Bedard obviously nope. won't be there at five. Leo Carlson mm -hmm. won't be there at five. But based on everything that's going on, I think there's a chance that Michkov will be there at five. 
It doesn't scare me off the whole Russia, KHL, National Hockey League coming over, not coming over. I'm not scared of that. I'm sure he will come over. It doesn't scare me off that he has a contract, that he's going to be in the KHL for the next two years, three years, whatever. But that doesn't scare me off at all either. Uh, you take a look at Kaprizov, and he came over a couple of years later, and he came over a little bit older, and look what he was able to do. Yeah. Um, the, the the things that have scared off a lot of people, they don't scare me off. I don't watch games as, as often, you know, these prospects as often as Grant does. I mean, that's what Grant, that's his specialization, right? So he watches those for a living. But in the games that I saw, I think Michkov is after Bedard, the best pure mm -hmm. talent in that age group. And on some nights, better. I also think that Leo Carlson has a real special talent, but, you know, I think Michkov will be available at five. And if the Canadians if have I the could, fifth pick, I, I would draft them. If I could, Tony, what, and, yeah, those are all really good points. What would, what would be your thoughts on, like, I, I hear, like, Will Smith, coming around that that uh, that point in the draft. Do you have any opinion on him? I haven't seen him all that much. So it wouldn't be fair for me to give you an opinion on him. This is what I know. I know that he has put up a lot of points. Mm -hmm. You know, compared to other players that have passed through the same program, he's put up more points than them. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that obviously Kent Hughes knows him well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you still pick he seems, he seems to be a consensus now. pick for many. He seems to be a consensus yeah. pick by many. Um, I don't know him that much. I don't know him that much. He's got average height, obviously he's six foot tall. He's about uh, probably about a buck eighty. He puts up about uh, two points per game with the U.S. national development team, but um, he projects to be a top two line centerman in the National Hockey League. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on what I read, it's good. Based on the people that I talk to, it's good. You know, he's a dynamic offensive player. Michkov has a talent that's like off the charts for me. I'm okay. like I said, I'm not scared yeah. of the whole Russian thing. I'm not. I'm really not. Yeah. But I mean, um, you know, some take bigger risks than others. What can I tell you? You know? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for calling, man. Thanks, Tony. Have a great night. Love the podcast. All right. Yeah, I, th I think he had the show on in the background and it made for a little bit of echo or feedback and stuff like that. But uh, uh, anyway, it's, it's it's all good. The, the lines are open. one 585 7425 John in Kelowna, BC. We're, we're a place that they say is absolutely beautiful. It's where uh, Shea Weber and Carey Price will retire. Price as early as in the next month or so here. How you doing, John? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Tony. Okay, good. I'm happy to hear it. Do you know where uh, Carey Price is building his place in Kelowna? I have no idea at all, but I'm sure that it's uh, in an isolated area. I would imagine it is. Yes, I would imagine it is. Is Kelowna as beautiful as people say it is? Uh, no, actually not. It's more beautiful. Oh, is that right, eh? Yes, it's uh, a place you would love to come to, either Kelowna, anywhere in the Okanagan, all the way from Osuyas up to even Kamloops, for that matter. Is that right, eh? I have to make my way down there. I, 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 was, I visited Vancouver once. It's lovely. Um, you know, my biggest regret was I didn't visit Stanley Park when I was there because I heard a lot of good things about Stanley Park, but I got to make my way to Kelowna one day. John, what's on your mind? Well, oh, I just enjoy talking. Um, what's on my mind probably more than anything else is over the years, 
it was always been so frustrating that people would always say that Toronto is Canada's hockey team. And yet I've run into so many people that just love Montreal. And I just think that it's Canada's team. There's no doubt about it after with all the tradition and everything. Yeah. And I the opportunity once, just once, it was a retirement of Patrick Roy that my wife and I went to Montreal to see his retirement when they played the Bruins. Unfortunately, they lost in overtime with their young hockey goaltender, Carey Price. But it was still great to get to Montreal because I've always wanted to do it. I've had people that have come from Montreal and I've talked to, and I actually had an old friend and he was a good friend of Gump Worsley. And his name was Kevin Conroy. And Mm -hmm. he actually, he had played with uh, Gump Worsley and he was a good friend of Dickie Moore's. So I'm going back a long time. Yeah, no, you definitely are going back a long time. Listen, uh, the Montreal Canadiens are Canada's team. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, that could change with one playoff run. The you know, Toronto Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup this year, and then all of a sudden they're going to be referred to as Canada's team. That's just the way it is. But the Montreal Canadiens are the last Canadian team, the last Canadian team to have won the Stanley Cup. They did so back in 1993. All right. Yeah. Back to the full lines we go. Hey, thank you very much for calling. And one day, maybe I'll run into you in Kelowna, BC. It would be a pleasure to talk hockey with you. That would be very nice, Tony. And thank All right. You much, Take right? care of yourself. Thank you very much. one 585 7425 I'm going to get to one more. Hopefully, the phone rings. And it's uh, Christopher. Um, it's, uh, who is it? Rolls Christopher Francois. Rolls Christopher Francois. He said he was going to call in. Let's see if he's calling in. one 585 7425 We got Tony in Pennsylvania. Tony. Hey, Tony, how are you? I, I, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing a post-game show out of Montreal. I got a call from Toronto. I got a call from Kelowna, and I got a call from Pennsylvania. <laughs> I always told Agnello I should be doing this show from Florida. <laughs> I told him, I want you to buy me the condo in Florida. He hasn't yet. What's on your mind, Tony? Well, I just want to say that I'm a fan that has totally accepted the rebuild. You know, I just think good for you. I just think it's very logical um, to just, you know, the short term failure reaps the long term benefits. You know, I just think that's a logical way of thinking about it. But on the flip side of that, though, Tony, I'm not the fan who's going to continue to watch this team game after game after game when they're playing this poorly. You can call me a fair weather fan all you want. I still love the Habs, but it pains me to see them play this way constantly. So I rarely, especially in the second half of the year, I've rarely watched them. You know, if I find some, yeah, but this is what you should have done, Tony, this is what you should have done. Okay. It pains you because you're expecting a result. And if you don't get the result, it bothers you. You have to accept that they're rebuilding. So what you should do is you should probably watch with other intentions. Watch with the eye of the scouting eye. Watch to take a look at the kids. Watch to see if a player hits a milestone with a goal. Watch to see if a player hits a milestone with an assist. We haven't talked about it yet, but Nick Suzuki scored his 25th goal of the season tonight. And what a goal he scored. Shorthanded as well. He made Bulldog and Sorokin look like patate chipol. You know what I mean? Yeah. He I beat the hook in the foot race. He got one hand on it, took a stab at it, up and over Sorokin. Mamma mia, will you? Pesand and on it. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I understand where you're coming from, Tony. Yeah. But at the same time, um, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm only an hour and a half away from Pittsburgh. All of my friends are Pittsburgh Penguin fans. They're so used to having players who are superstars who score at a point per game pace, like like at you know every every freaking year. And yeah, I think I'm I think I'm happy that Pittsburgh missed the playoffs because I went down there, Tony, in 2012, 
for the NHL draft when the Canadians had the third pick and they drafted Alex Galchenyuk. Uh-huh. And the day of the draft, no, the day before the draft, I believe it was, I went to one of those establishments, which I won't name, which is pretty famous, which I won't really? name. I'm not naming it, I said. <laughs> I don't want you to name it. <laughs> and I had one of their burgers, which was bigger than my head. All right. Two days later, I was returning to Montreal and I had to grab a flight to actually go to Italy. I was going to Rome. One day into my Italy trip, which was about two or three days after I had that burger, I ended up in the hospital with a bacteria. Oh, that's not good. No, it's not good. Yeah. But anyway, they put me on antibiotics, and I was okay. But the night I went to the hospital, I thought I was going to die. Maybe that's why I'm not crying that Pittsburgh didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I'm getting at is, you know, um, I think it's one thing, like, for a struggling team, but you have, like, a player or two that are, like, you know, yeah, it's cool that Nick Suzuki, you know, set a new total in career points. But I'm talking yeah. about the guys who are scoring 80 to 90 points. Those guys are fun to watch because they're scoring basically every night. But those are um, the guys that the Canadians have drafted and will continue to draft going forward. This is why I want them to get Connor Bedard. Because you know you're what, Tony? Amen. Because you're going to see Connor Bedard score 50 goals and pick up 100 points. As a matter of fact, are you ready? Even though he hasn't played a game in the National Hockey League, I will guarantee it. Connor Bedard will have a 50 goal season and a hundred point season in the same season that he has the 50 goals, he'll have a hundred points. I will guarantee it. That's the marinero guarantee. The only thing, the only thing, you know, is that, you know, I'll ask is that, you know, he's healthy because if he's healthy, he's going to do it. The kid is that good. And for all the people that say, you know, Marinero, you have a losing attitude, this, that, whatever. I don't have a losing attitude. I have a winning attitude. I want to win for an extended period of time. I want to have fun. I want to be entertained. I, I'll, I'll go to the Bell Center. I'll spend the three, four, five hundred dollars on a couple of tickets. I want to see Connor Bedard. He will be worth the price of admission. When was the last time, you know what, you went to the Bell Center and you said, you know what, I'm happy to pay this amount of money to watch. I want to see Connor Bedard. That's what I want to see. That's who I want to see. Hey. Here, man, you couldn't have said it any better. Um, yeah. I guess my yeah. original point I was trying to get at is um, how more can the uh, Habs organization take with you know losing seasons and rebuilding before you get more fans, kind of like what I do, where it's like you know, yeah, they you know they love the Habs, they still watch a lot of Habs podcasts like I do every night with you, and yeah, like that, but they're not physically watching the game, they're not physically buying merchandise and all that other stuff. How much longer can they take before they start losing? money jeff molson does before i'm like, gonna lose money there's a waiting list for season tickets and you know what everyone's gonna want to jump on them you want to know why because suzuki's gonna be here long term and and caulfield's gonna be here long term and slavkovsky is gonna be here long term and uh, you know what kirby doc's gonna be here long term and one day lane hudson's gonna be here long term and who knows whoever they draft in this year's draft is gonna be here long term and so, you know what? They might have a losing team for the next year or two, but if there's season tickets available, everyone's going to jump on them. You want to know why? Because they want to be able to hold on to those season tickets because they want to see these players that I've been talking to you about for a very, very long time. Thanks so much for the call, Tony in Pennsylvania. There you have it. One more call, and then I wait par la. Salut la visite. Ciao, ciao. Bello. Where are we going? We are going to the phone lines. Hello. Yes, hello, who's this? Giovanni. Giovanni, uh, hold on, you're going to be on with Tony in a minute. Okay. Giovanni, where are you calling from? Montreal. And just your uh, topic, please. My topic is... Uh... My topic is, uh, you know, I, just like the last caller said that uh, me too, I'm embracing the tank. But I have a little issue. Well, maybe it's not an issue, but uh, the Canadians, 
right now, when healthy, they do still have a good team. Okay, we're going to put and, you on in five seconds, okay? Okay. Marinero, welcome back to Sick Podcast, and we are going to Giovanni in Montreal. Giovanni! Da Giovanni, da Giovanni, da Giovanni, da Giovanni. How are you, Tony? I'm very, very good. Very, very good. I recognize Giovanni. This is Giovanni with the uh, eggplant fritters. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, the eggplant with fritters. With a new restaurant. With a new restaurant. Yeah. And, uh, and what's the name of the new restaurant now? Jesso. G-E-S-O. G-E-S-O. Yeah. Located uh, on Sherbrooke Street, downtown Montreal. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Wow, okay. And uh, Jesso means what exactly? It's uh, the first letter is what? It's Giovanni, Erica, Stella, Olivia. It's my daughter that came up with the name, and I said, you know what? I'm going to use that name. Oh, wow. Your daughter, your initial, and your daughter's initials. Yeah. That's, pre that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, okay. A little original. Yeah, you know, what's even cooler is that you just got yourself a free plug on the Sick Podcast with uh, thousands of people Actually, watching right now, and I would imagine that would lead to, uh, I don't know, about uh, 7,000 eggplant fritters for me in a platter? Or? No, anytime, man. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, of course. Yeah, anytime. Well, you're on a diet now. Yeah, I understand. So I'm going you know, to have 100 instead of having 150. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> Giovanni, tell me what's, what's on your mind. Listen, uh, Tony, I I, uh, I don't know if you remember when I called you earlier in the season when I said... Uh, I, I, you know, you know you're probably going to tell me that you think the Canadians are actually a better team than their record. Yeah. Yeah. I just... I, I read minds. I read... Yeah. I read minds. Yeah. I had a feeling you were going to tell me that, Giovanni. You know, I just... I could feel it. It was in the air. Love is in, in the, the air. air. Yeah. When they're healthy, if you take the, the top players that are healthy, uh, maybe without, with better goaltending, but they are a better team, they probably would have made the playoffs. They probably would have made the playoffs. They surprised us by losing, you know, close in those tight games in the, against the, um, the harder teams. Yeah. You know, you know, so I have a little issue. I, I embrace the tank, like the last caller said, uh, you know, and that you've been saying for the past uh, year or two to embrace the tank. I do agree with you. But next mm -hmm. year, if they're healthy and they're in the playoffs or they're going to miss the playoffs by, you know, like Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. how do you think the media is going to take it? <clears throat> Oh, they should have went out and got somebody. How, how's the media going to take it? I'll tell you how the media is yeah. going to take it, all right? Several members of the media will be upset. You want to know why? Why? Because April 11 or April 12, when the season's over, then they have to wonder what to talk about for the rest of April, for the rest of May, and then up until the first couple of weeks of June. Because the third week of June... They'll preview the draft, and then they'll talk about the draft. And then after that, they're going to talk about unrestricted free agency. But from the middle of April, they can talk about the postmortem for a couple of days. But then all of a sudden, you have about a good two months of radio and television to talk about other sports. And not all members of the media watch all sports. As a matter of fact, there's some of them that watch just the Canadians. There's actually some of them that don't even watch the Canadians. They watch the highlights. Yeah, I understand that. But this year, I find that... The so media the media got... won't be happy, but you know what? If the Canadians miss the playoffs another year or two, and they draft who they have to draft, one day I'm going to be at the Stanley Cup parade. And I'm going to say to them... Oh, weren't you the ones that were unhappy? Then, but you know what? After you know what's going to happen, Giovanni? They're all going to say that they were happy that they endorsed the rebuild, that they wanted to rebuild this, that, all that stuff. You know, they're going to sing all that stuff. But do, do you think? You know, do you think they would have made the playoffs with a healthy team? 
even with Carey Price in this? So you know what? Uh, do I think it? It's hypothetical. We'll never know. They obviously would have come close. But my answer to that is, it would have ruined them if they would have made the playoffs. For what? That's For what? These miracles of the eighth place team getting in. It, 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 this is, I, you know what? I, I don't, you know, like, I don't, I don't want to go by miracles here. I want to go by percentages. Do you understand? I like, yeah. you go big or go home. What are we doing here? We're getting in the playoffs to hope that you can pull off a miracle. It was fun. It was fun when it happened in 2010. Yeah. And Yaroslav, uh, Yaroslav Alak stood on his head and he beat the, uh, yeah. the the Washington Capitals in round one and he beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in round two. But at a certain point, your luck runs out. Then they lost in yeah. five games to the Philadelphia Flyers. And you thought back then that if they beat Pittsburgh and they beat Washington, you thought that they were going to beat the Flyers. So they didn't because they just weren't good enough. Halak was masking all the warts in the team. That game six versus the Washington Capitals on home ice in Montreal, I think he stopped like 54 or 57 or something like that. It's one of the yeah. best goaltending performances I've seen from a Montreal Canadiens goaltender in my life. One of the best, yeah. considering the team they played against, the circumstances, the playoffs, all of that stuff. Yeah, but it, it, they do look like they're going in the right direction, that's for sure. Yeah, they got beat by R.J. Umberger. Remember that? Uh, what? They got beat by R.J. Umberger back then. Yeah, yeah. Scored yeah. a bunch of goals. He had like one of those Chris Contos yeah. uh, type of John Drews type of playoffs. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But by the way, can I bring can I bring Joey with me to Jesso one day? Anytime, anytime. Okay. You didn't ask me who Joey is. Who's Joey? Joey's a yellow son-in-law. You're the, he's the guy that you spoke with before coming on with me oh. who asked you what you wanted to talk about, your topic, oh, and then transferred you to me. A, I, I, I didn't know that. I'm sorry about that. Who did you think oh. it was? I thought it was somebody else uh, 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 on the, in the administration. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's uh, Joey. That was a yellow son-in-law. Okay. Well, say hi to him. Say I'm going to bring him with me. Okay, bring them in. Time. I'm gonna bring him to the restaurant, but he likes he likes eggplant fritters, eh? and I know you don't always have them on the menu. I, I, if you tell me you're coming, I make them for you. That's what I did the last time. Yeah, that's exactly what you did the last time. You're right about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah, you have the best eggplant fritters Thank I've you. ever tasted in my life. Thank you. And you know oh, what? Changing up the menu. Huh? I don't. I don't deserve any. No, well, you no, I don't deserve any. Why? I don't deserve any. Why is that? Because I pulled a fast one on you, and that was me that answered the call, and I pretended to be Joey. I know. I know it was you. Did you know it was no, me? It was you. Tell me you I know it was me. You. That's why I didn't know who exactly, but I knew it was you. You didn't know I exactly, didn't but you knew it was me. Yeah, how'd you do that? Like, I'm watching you on TV, and uh, I don't know. Anyways, there couldn't be two people that look this good, by the way. Huh? Giovanni, all the best yeah. to you. I just saw, right? Okay. Thank you very much. All the much. best. Anyway. I'll see you soon. Thank you for calling me and thank you for supporting. I appreciate it. All right. Ciao, ciao. All right. There you have it. Giovanni, I just saw on Sherbrooke. Uh, it's 1118. That's it for us tomorrow night. Final game of the regular season. Uh, I don't even know what's going on because I kind of wanted to go to the game. But if I go to the game, like I can't be here to do this and I want to be here to do this. I feel like I should be here to do this because the final game of the regular season. But I feel like I have to take in the Canadians and the Bruins. So anyway, and yellow and I will discuss it. Maybe I can go to the game and I could do the show from there somehow. I don't know. Can I take this uh, this background with me? It's a sick podcast. The show must go on. We will be back tomorrow, Monday to Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern. The Canadians versus the Boston Bruins. It is the final game of the regular season tomorrow night. And tomorrow night, I think we're going to see something special. If not in the hockey game, on the podcast for sure. Leave us a five-star review if you listen via Google, Apple, or Spotify. And you can watch us on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Twitter, Instagram. You can watch us everywhere, by the way. You'll see clips here or there. You'll see some teases. You'll see some promos. And uh, you know what? Give us a heart. Like it. Share it with your friends. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want to build it.
we were, uh, you know, it seems like just yesterday we were 100 and now we're like 11,000. And hopefully we can get it to 100,000 one day and hopefully we can get it to a million one day. That would be cool. That'd be really cool. The guys that are at master control, they're Cavallaro. I'm Marinaro. What you going to do, Montreal, when marination runs wild on you, brother? And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature.